everyone. It is Wednesday, October 20th, and I am terrible. <laughs> so on Monday, I edited and uploaded the part one vlog for the Black Halloweenathon, and it's Brittany Witch. On Friday, Halloween Town Readathon also started. I'm co-hosting that with B over at B's Book Hollow and Bridget. Uh, Bridget has a blog called The Illiterates, so um, I'll link everything in the description box for you so you can follow them. But um, I really, really love Halloween Town. And when B approached me to help, you know, create and um, do the readathon, I absolutely said yes. <laughs> it's just one more readathon to add to, to October, even though a lot is going on, but I just could not say no because I love Halloween Town. I think any late 80s or 90s kid like loves those kind of um, older Disney movies. Um, but yeah, I'll put, I have, I created the bingo board, the scavenger hunt board. Um, we all came up with prompts. Um, yeah, that's going on. It start like I said, started on Friday the 15th and is going towards the end of the month. And of course, I'm doubling up on prompts because there there would be no way. I couldn't add any I mean, I did add an additional book actually. Um, but I re I made um some prompts be good for a queen's pride, um which I finished over the weekend. I told you about that. And then I started uh, Kingdom of the Wicked. Um, I mean, I enjoyed it. I mean, I think there's just so many similarities between it and other YA books. And Amelia, our main character, she is dumb as a box of rocks, y'all. Dumb as a box of rocks. <laughs> she has zero uh, survival instincts, zero zero um she cannot keep herself alive at all and she's supposed to be this very powerful witch but okay more on that later um so her twin dies very gruesome actually her heart is cut out of her chest and um she summons a prince of hell to um, basically help her get ven vengeance, get answers, and she summons um, Wrath. So in Hell, there it's separated into seven houses, and they're representative of the seven deadly sins. So we have Wrath, Lust, Greed, Envy, Gluttony, Sloth, you know, the works. Um, but she summons Wrath because she's very angry. So a lot more is involved with their summoning than she realizes because she's dabbling in magic that's way above her pay grade. Um, but she don't care. She doesn't care. Um, by the end of the book, I mean, I, I enjoyed it. I, I enjoy the chemistry between Amelia and Wrath. I mean, I always look for any kind of romantic relationship, no matter what. So, here we are. Oh, I need to get fuel. Anyway, I finished that, and then I moved on to the second book, Kingdom of the Curse, because tonight, um, Jen, Jen and I are going live with our book club, um, I went out of town last week, so we had to kind of combine uh, Kingdom of the Wicked and Kingdom of the Cursed into one meeting to kind of stay on schedule because we're, we're booked out the rest of the year. There's no wiggle room at all. I'm enjoying the second one uh, kind of the same as I did the first. Um, it's really reminding me of Akabaf. And honestly, I she's no Sarah J. Maas, you know? So... <laughs> Even though I love, I love Wrath and Amelia and their chemistry, like honestly, I'm just rooting for their relationship. I just, Amelia gets on my nerves sometimes. She really, really does. And, uh, but anyways, um, I just wanted to update you because I haven't and um, I'm on my way to work so I should really focus on driving. I'm getting fuel right now. There it is. And I'll talk to you later. Bye. everyone it is friday october 22nd and i just got into work so i'm going to clock in um but i think the last time i talked to you i was finishing up uh kingdom of the cursed and then i started ace of spades 
and I have been practicing on saying this author's name, but now that the camera's on, I can't. So, I know the first name is, nope, not even gonna do it. Nope, no, 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 sorry. I don't wanna miss, I don't wanna mispronounce the name and I don't wanna butcher it. I don't wanna spoil it too much, but right from the synopsis, it says it's like a mashup between Get Out and Gossip Girl. But when I was reading it, I also felt like it was kind of like also mixed in there. I know what you did last summer and Pretty Little Liars. So that's what you have to expect when you read that book. Um, it's about two students that go to this really prestigious, um, it's a high school. And um, Devin, <laughs> yeah, his name is Devin. He's going there on a scholarship. Um, he's from like a poor family. Um, and then the other one, I call her she. She has a longer name than that though. Um, she has like a more wealthier family. And they're the only black kids in that school. And, you know, they have, they're really motivated to have, you know, straight A's and extracurricular activities and all that because they you know really feel like she wants to make her parents proud and um Devin wants a better life for his family his mom and his two brothers so all throughout their high school careers they've been doing very well and at the beginning of this book they become like the house like prefects um of their class and then weird things start to happen and by weird things I mean um this person by the name of aces uh releases pictures videos about them too in not very good light like Devin like he was I don't think he was fully out at the school and there was a video of him, or a picture, a picture and a video, it's like a sex tape, of him kissing and um, having sex with another boy. And so it was kind of like, that was like kind of like a forced outing, which, trigger warning. And then um, for Chi, it was like pictures of her, like at a party when she was all drunk and just not, not showing her in a very good light, especially because, um, She's trying to get into Yale and she can't have any kind of spots on her record kind of thing. So, um, so they're like, they're only, they kind of team together because this ACES is only targeting them. And I had some theories about who it might have been, who this ACES was. Um, but when you find out who it really is, wow. Wow, 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 wow. There's a whole slew of issues going on dating back years generations and it's not good um but yeah i really really enjoyed it uh, i gave it five stars i read that for both black Awainathon and for it's britney witch and today i'm starting my soul to keep by tana reeve do um that i've listened to um probably the first couple of chapters on my way to work and it's kind of heavy already um trigger warnings for death of an animal there's a, a dog a family dog that dies um from stomach torsion um so trigger warnings for that but um that first the first chapter or the prologue i think it's the prologue I'm very interested. I'm very interested in this book. Holy moly. But, um, all right. So that is also, I think that's also, I think it's just for, just for Black Awainathon. Yeah. For the, published in the 19th century, because it was published in 1997. So, yeah, 1997. But, um, my coffee's brewing, and I gotta open the doors and start working, but I just wanted to update you, because I haven't in a while. Um, but I will talk to you later. Bye! Hey everyone, it is Wednesday, October 27th, and I just got to work, um, and I haven't vlogged in a while, so sorry, um, but after I read 
ace of spades i i think that was the last book i needed for black -a -thon, so i finished black -a -thon, and now i'm focusing on it's britney witch so i had like three goosebumps books on there um one day at horrorland cuckoo clock of doom and piano lessons can be murder so um they're pretty short so i finished all three of those in like two days and now i'm reading adaptation by pepper pace i'm liking it sit here over here i'm liking it but I, there's just this one part and it's actually a major plot of the book that I wasn't okay with. Oh my gosh, this has ice in it. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Lord. So in adaptation, this is kind of like a dystopian post-apocalyptic world where aliens have invaded. And I say invaded because you learn that there was a conspiracy. And what they wanted was to learn and share knowledge. And um, something happened with their, um, when the mothership kind of touched down. Because they have like this, I don't know exactly what it's called, but they have a way of adapting to different environments, you know, so they don't, just because they're aliens, so they can like breathe the air, things like that. They have, a, the aliens have a way of doing that. <clears throat> um, it infected the people of planet Earth, and since their bodies was wasn't like the aliens they couldn't adapt and since the body was trying to adapt it was like killing everybody and everybody thought it was some sort of flu um, so it literally killed almost everybody and then what the people who didn't die were rounded up by the centurions who were the aliens and taken to earth 2 where um, they can live and be adapted and have a prosperous life. The aliens knew they fucked up, okay? They knew. <laughs> so they tried to make it right. Carmella doesn't see it that way. Carmella just remembers them invading and the population dying. They literally call them the blobs because that's what they look like. They look like blobs and they can make tentacles with um, little sensors to help them touch, feel, um, all that jazz and one day Carmela comes across one she tries to kill it but they can regenerate like super fast um this alien doesn't want to harm Carmela. he just wants to learn and he prefers earth he wants to live on earth um he doesn't want to live on earth too or in the mothership so he decided to kind of be with Carmela. She had some wounds that he held to heal because he can manipulate through the tentacles. He can manipulate people's bodies into healing faster. And he, I guess he saw like some of her memories where um, she had been married once before and she had lost a baby. So trigger warnings for the death of a spouse and death of a baby. Um, and one night when he was back on the mothership, he was high. They get high for some reason and <laughs> he decided to make her a baby so he went to one of the mothership's labs and spliced like some of her dna with an egg and sorry siri tried to interrupt me but um anyway he created uh, an embryo and a fetus and he implanted it in her without her knowledge and it wasn't until she was pregnant and the pregnancy is produce is progressing a lot faster than normal pregnancy um that he comes and explains everything to her and also because his mother 
and he finally confesses everything to his mother and his friends and they were like you basically raped her like what are you what are you doing um he realizes he made a mistake and he goes to apologize and make things right and take care of her <sighs> i just i i'm liking everything but that little fact because now i'm at the point where the baby's born they're kind of living together and they're super cute falling in love with each other but i'm just like you impregnated her without her permission why did you do that i don't know <laughs> i'm gonna finish it obviously but that's really affecting how i'm reading this book but i'm loving everything else the sci-fi aspect of it and the alien and everything that's so like cool and but that one little part i don't like it but anyway i'm at work the doors are open um tonight is the live stream for seven deadly sequins i've already read this book but i do want to make some post-it notes just so we have stuff to talk about during the live and i'll update you all a little bit later bye hi everyone it is friday October 28th yeah it's pretty bright outside I should have brought my sunglasses <laughs> but anyways um yesterday we had the live stream for seven deadly sequins by Julianne Lindsay it's number two of her Bonnie and Clyde um indie published mystery series and I think the last time I updated y'all was what was I reading adaptation by Pepper Pace. So my feelings were complicated for this book. I really enjoyed it. Like the sci-fi aspect, like the post-apocalyptic stuff, the aliens invading. That's a trope that we have seen over and over again in sci-fi, but I feel like she did it very, very well and she made it super original. And I loved the characters so much. Like our main character has a truck just drives by Carmela she is fantastic I loved her I also loved our um our alien main character his name is Bilal and I liked him a lot except for one thing he just wants to make her happy so one night he's back at the mothership and he's high apparently if these little blob aliens eat dandelions they get high I didn't make the rules. <sighs> it's crazy. Um, but in his, like, impaired state, he's like, you know, I'm going to make her a baby so she's happy. So she won't be lonely and she's happy. So he does this. And he makes an embryo on the mothership because you know he can do that with her dna and his dna and like his friend's dna because he doesn't have sperm so he used a friend who was human um but he replaced everything with his dna and he impregnates her with the embryo without her knowledge she thinks it's like a nightmare that she's having when really he like impregnated her Yikes is right. I know that's what, exactly what you said. Yikes. Yikes is right. <clears throat> so, he doesn't, I mean, it's base. it is rape. It's rape. At the very least, it's forced in vitro fertilization. And he confesses what he did to his mother and his friend. And even they were like, dude, that's basically rape. What are you doing? And so he goes down to earth to make it right, to help her with the pregnancy, to help her deliver, and to help her raise this baby for five years. That was the goal, you know. There's also a life and death situation that happens. She's kidnapped, so is their baby, and he rescues them. So there's that, you know, situation that kind of brings them closer together and makes them realize that they love each other. All of that is super sweet, except for this one part, that one part. So that's why I am conflicted. I ended up giving it four stars. All my trigger warnings are in there, in the synopsis. You be the judge. If you want to read it, don't, you know, 
It's completely up to you. I'm just giving you the knowledge. You infer with it what you will. So I was talking for a while during that first clip and then I realized that it wasn't recording anymore. Oh, I fucking hate that. Anyways, so just to recap, um, after um, I read Adaptation, I started reading The Dare by Hyrule LaRue. Um, it's about two people from high school who she was like the most popular girl in school and he was kind of like the loner. They called him like a freak. Um, they had made out one time in a bathroom and her boyfriend got extremely jealous and went after him and our male main character pulled a knife on him. So that's kind of what he's known for and everyone thinks he's dangerous and things like that. Um, so years later, they come to a party and they play beer pong one-on-one um, -on -one, and it turns into a, a drink or dare beer pong. So his dares um, make her do like the most degrading things like crawl um, to him and kiss his boots for 60 seconds. So this book has a lot of fetishes and kinks, um, one being humiliation, uh, blood play, knife play, things like that. So they're all listed in the synopsis. Um, if you wanna take a look at that and judge for yourself if you would like this book, I enjoyed it. I'm not typically into humiliation kink, but it did work for me. It was a good book. I really enjoy Harley LaRue's writing style. And then I started reading Every New Year um, by Katrina Jackson. This is about a, a group of four college students. They've been friends since freshman year of college. And two of them um, get into a relationship pretty early on. And the main two, our main two, I forget their names, sorry, I'm reading it today. Their relationship starts like basically just as friends, but then they are each other's like the traditional like New Year's kiss. So then that evolves every, like so every New Year they're each other's kiss. And then that evolves to like oral sex and then full on sex. Um, but basically, and then you get into the present time where the previous New Year's, she didn't show up and he is like sitting there waiting for her and he, she didn't message him, didn't call him, nothing. Um, so they haven't spoken in a year and they meet on this flight he's taking for business and she is the flight attendant. So they're basically like stuck in each other's presence on a plane. They can't go anywhere and it's extremely awkward at first, but then like put their emotions out on the line. Um, so this book, this book is told like from each of their New Year's encounters and then like the present time. Um, I'm really, I'm really loving it. I love Katrina Jackson. Honestly, she writes swoony, steamy romances that also pull out your heartstrings. Like these books are so heartfelt as well. And it's, they're very romantic, um, which is one of the things I love about Katrina Jackson's writing. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's going to be my last book for It's Britney Witch. Um, I'm vaguely participating in Smutathon. <laughs> But um, I made the I made some prompts work for um, adaptation and the dare. So hopefully I can make some of them work for every new year. And I'll show you the bingo board here. But um, hopefully I will finish that today. It's not very long. I think based on my Kindle reading speed, I have like an hour left. Um, but yeah, that is basically what I've been reading. Um, we're almost done. Yay! Hi everyone. It is Friday, October 29th, and I have the day off. This morning I had an appointment, a video appointment with my primary care provider. And now I'm just going to be trying to organize everything in this room. <laughs> oh my God. It's just like, there's literally just stacks of books everywhere and they need to be put on the shelf. They need to be shelved like they're loved. <laughs> And also I need to update, I put them all, I like, categorize them in my book buddy app because when I go book shopping more, it's like none of these new books are in my catalog. So I don't know. I could be buying doubles and I have bought doubles. It's a problem. I'm going to be cataloging them and then hopefully I will reorganize um, my bookshelf and um, get them situated. So... I'm going to show you what the situation is. So I have all of these books, like huge stacks. This stack, I have some back there, that stack over there, 
and then all around me here. Um, and the hope is to, because there's like two shelves over there, that's, or like the one shelf, um, that I'm going to be using. So behind those cozies on this shelf here, there are some category romances. I want to move them to this shelf up here. And I'm going to move those Funko Pops down somewhere. So those are where my categories are going to go. Will they all fit up there? Probably not. And then I want to move my cozies to these shelves, these two shelves here. These two. Um, so I have more room for romances because, as you can see, I have a bunch that need to go on the, that shelf. Like, that's it. That's the space we have. <laughs> I have no more room for anything. Will that stop my book buying? No, it will not. It's a thing. It's a thing. But, so yeah, I have to put all of these in my book buddy app and um, take off Goodwill stickers if there's still Goodwill stickers on there. And rearrange themselves so that is what I'm going to be doing today and hopefully maybe if I get it done really quick um I could go to Goodwill <laughs> uh, while I'm doing that I'm going to be listening to Layer of Dreams I kind of want to finish this before the end of the month um but yeah that's what I'm going to be doing. Um, last night, I read Boot Up by Danielle Allen. It's like a Halloween, a very short Halloween hookup. Um, so our main character, Malika, she comes home uh, over the Halloween weekend because it's her best friend from... Uh, like I think it was like high school it's like her best friend's birthday so she's coming home from college and um to go to her birthday and she's going it's the night before she's like I'm just gonna stay in have some popcorn pizza and watch a movie her best friend is like begging her to come out like just a little get together with um some of her best friend's new friends that is also invited to the party just to get to know them better like before the party so she ends up being really bored and she decides to go and there she meets um, a boy named Dre and sparks start flying. Um, they're instantly attracted to each other and then the group brings out a Ouija board and these two Malika and Dre are literally the only ones with sense and they're like we're not messing with this I'm gonna go and so they leave and it turns into a hookup. And um, they pretty much have an established relationship by the end of this book. Um, but yeah, I really liked it. It was um, really good. I gave it five stars. Um, I made this and the dare work for some prompts for Smetathon. And I do have two more books that I want to read before the end of this month and that is well the one that I'm listening to Layer of Dreams but in addition to that two other books um and that is Sing Me to Sleep by R.M. Virtues um I got early access to the ebook because I'm a part of his Patreon and um that book comes out on Halloween October 31st so I want to read that and um make a review and then also um The Maven Feast by C.M. Nescosta um, also early access because I'm a part of their Patreon. Um, that comes out in November, I think, like November 3rd. I can't remember. But I also want to read that. Um, I need to find a book, a quick book, that's like a menage or reverse harem. Reverse harem vampire paranormal romance. Sorry, someone's trying to call me. Because those are the prompts that I have left over after I read Sing Me to Sleep for Smutathon. So if I can get Blackout on Smutathon in the next couple of days, that would be great. <laughs> Alright, so that is my plan for the day. Wish me luck.
Hi everyone, it is Monday, November 1st, and I just wanted to wrap up uh, this reading vlog. So um, over the weekend, I just did a whole bunch of cleaning and reorganizing my library and office space, partially because it needed to be done, but also it turned into like this NaNoWriMo prep that I wanted my desk like cleaned off for NaNoWriMo, which is happening today. Um, so um, I did finish Layer of Dreams. I finished that audiobook. Um, I also started Sing Me to Sleep by RN Virtues. I didn't finish it until the drive to work this morning, so I can't count it for October, um, but I did finish it and it was fantastic. It was out yesterday. It was the release day was yesterday for Halloween. So definitely get yourself a copy. It is so, so good. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to wrap this up. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.